Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be reviewing the HomePod Mini. What I found a little odd when I first started researching the HomePod Mini is there's a lot of specifications missing on Apple's site, such as power, frequency response. These are all things that we commonly use to compare speakers together and let us know if it's going to sound more like an Amazon Echo or more like a proper audiophile type speaker. So to find out this audio information, I got some help from another channel called All Things One Place, who did an awesome job setting up all the audio tests and explaining the results. He's also gonna be posting a video that goes into deeper into the testing side of this, um, and I'll link to that below. If it's not available now, it'll be available shortly. So the four questions I really wanted to answer were, how much power does it put out? How much bass punch does it have? What's the frequency response? And also, what are some weird quirks that I kind of wish I had known before I purchased it? Let's get started. Oh, another note. For the purposes of these tests, I'm going to be comparing it pretty unfairly against a Bang & Olufsen Bio Play S3. This is my current uh, go-to Bluetooth speaker. I've got two of them in my house, and I use them all the time. The reason I say it's unfair is because the MSRP of that speaker is three times more, it's much larger, and they don't even make it anymore. However, this is what I'm used to listing audio on, so I wanted to know how does the uh, HomePod Mini stack up. Also, one more side note, I'm not really gonna be covering a lot of the Siri functionality side of things because that's been done to death in a million other videos. I'm really focused on the audio quality. First up is the power and bass test. In order to get this working, we loaded some test tracks on my iPhone, which essentially just play a flat tone for a couple seconds, step up five hertz, Play another tone, step up, and repeat. Basically, we are looking for when is sound actually audible out of the speaker at what frequency, and then what frequency does it kind of like peak for peak bassiness and what power is it using at that frequency. We measured the power with a power meter and we measured sound with our ears. The side note for this, both of these speakers have built-in equalizers, so this makes comparing them directly a little tricky. Uh, so take these results with a grain of salt. First up was the HomePod Mini, which first started producing noise around 40 hertz and had a peak frequency of about 65 hertz for bass at about 13 watts. The Bio Play S3 first started producing audio around 15 hertz and peaked around 45 hertz at 22 watts. This simply means that the Bio Play S3 was able to start producing bass at a lower frequency and has more punch. And that's not surprising given its size. Um, it has a lot more surface area on the driver to move air and a lot more power behind it. But the HomePod Mini did just fine. Next up was the frequency response test. For this, we actually went up on my roof and placed a calibrated microphone one meter away from the speaker. We then played a special test track, which was a sinusoidal sweep, covering all the frequencies we wanted to test and recorded it all with a laptop with special audio analyzing software to give us the results. If we take a look at the results for the HomePod Mini, we notice the bass starts somewhere after 50 hertz, and then the curve's really flat for most of it, and then starts to fall off around 10,000 hertz. The reason it falls off around here is there's no tweeter. Looking at the results for the BO Play S3, Bass starts a little bit earlier, maybe around 45 hertz, and this stays strong up to 20,000 hertz. Again, this has a tweeter. We notice some dips in this curve as well, and this is due to Bang Olufsen's proprietary EQ that they put on this speaker. All right, now I wanna talk about five quirks about the HomePod Mini that I kinda of wish I had known before I purchased it. First up, connectivity. You can only connect to it through AirPlay. This is only officially supported on Apple devices. It does not work on Android or Windows. However, there are probably hacks to make it work, but it's not supported natively. So there's no 3.5 millimeter input jack or anything like that. This brings me on to quirk number two, AirPlay. Specifically, AirPlay 2. This is my first AirPlay 2 device, and boy, I was in for a bit of a shock. Compared to AirPlay 1, which basically replaces that wire, you play a song on your phone, you wire it into a speaker, it starts playing on that speaker, done. Very low lag, works really well. AirPlay 2 is a little different. With AirPlay 2, it's a little bit more complicated. 
You can play multiple tracks on different speakers in different rooms at different volumes. You can even arrange speakers in a group so you can have a right channel and a left channel. And this all sounds great on paper, but in practice, it's a super big letdown. Compared to AirPlay 1, it's laggy between when you press play and when the speaker starts making noise. Uh, it's buggy, and it's just overly complicated. I'll give you an example of a bug. I was taking a call during the week while I was playing some music in the background, and I wanted to pause the audio. Now, normally, the audio would just pause for me, but this didn't happen, so I went into the music app, paused the audio. Audio kept playing on the speaker, even though the app had stopped. I even quit the app, and the audio was still coming out through the speaker. So the only way to get the speaker to stop playing was to unplug it from the wall, all while trying to take this call. So it, it's just way more complicated than it needs to be. I just want to play music on a speaker. Why can't it be simple? Number three is the sound. Now, when I first unboxed this, I put it out in the middle of my room in open air, and I was super disappointed with the results. I thought it was really quiet and it lacked bass, and I was not happy with it at all. Next, I tried moving it into a small room, and it sounded a lot better. And this got me thinking. In that small room, I actually placed it next to a wall. So I brought it back out in my main room and placed it against a wall. And all of a sudden, it sounded a whole lot better. So the reason for this is pretty simple. In a speaker like this, it can emanate sound in 360 degrees. However, I'm only in one small section of that. So when you put it against a wall, a lot of the reflected sound against the wall also gets back to my ears. So I can sound, it sounds much more rich and bassy and, and a lot louder. And number five, USB-C. Yes, the HomePod Mini is powered by USB-C. And I was actually gonna try and figure out if I could make this like a portable speaker by plugging into a USB-C power bank and that didn't work. So I thought that was it, no big deal. I was about to shoot the video, I grabbed the power supply, plugged it in, didn't work. Started flashing orange. And I couldn't figure out what this meant. Maybe it meant the uh, couldn't connect to Wi-Fi or couldn't see the phone or something like that. Nope, it was the wrong power adapter. It was actually the power adapter for my iPad Pro. They look identical. And I had been swapping them back and forth when I was also reviewing the MagSafe 2 wireless power adapter for the uh, iPhone 11 mini, excuse me, the iPhone 12 mini, which I'm gonna be reviewing in an upcoming video. And I swapped them back and it worked just fine. So in conclusion, I have three main thoughts regarding this speaker. If you are looking for a smart speaker with Siri functionality that sounds pretty good, I'd say this is a good buy. I'd say save the money from the HomePod, which costs $299, and get the HomePod Mini. However, if you're looking for audio quality alone, skip all the HomePods and get something that's made by a proper audio company like Bang & Olufsen, um, JBL, Sonos, someone like that. It's going to be a lot simpler and they can focus just on producing the best sound quality possible. Number three, if you're that third type of person which wants the latest edge technology, smart speaker functionality, and you want something that sounds really good, skip the HomePod mini and get the bigger brother, the full size HomePod. It's going to have way better bass response, a lot more power. It's going to be more flexible to allow you to use it in different spaces. Um, it's probably going to be a much, much better speaker for you. That's all I have for you. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below, and I'll see you guys next time.